the SI joint. It's actually a very complicated joint. We call it the sacroiliac joint, or SI for short. And the SI joint is actually a large joint where the spine attaches to the pelvis in the lower part of the back. And it moves only a little bit, about three degrees, but that motion is really important for normal communication between the back and the pelvis, particularly when we walk, when we sit, and we go from sitting to standing. When the SI joint gets injured, usually what occurs is the ligaments, or the tissues that hold the joint together, get stretched, much like a rubber band that might get overstretched and lose some of the elasticity. So the joint usually will over-rotate and then often gets stuck. And that changes the mechanics of the low back and generates a lot of pain. The sacrum, which is part of the SI joint, also attaches to the disc just above it, the L5-S1 disc, and can put a lot of rotational load onto the disc and then contribute to other coexisting symptoms where the disc gets a tear in it, and so we have yet another problem. Who gets injured? Usually it's someone who has a slip and fall, and the SI joint gets torqued, much like if you sprained your ankle and had a sprained ankle that was then loose and laxed, the SI joint can become loose and laxed. You'll also see it after pregnancy when a woman has a baby and the pelvis actually comes apart a little bit to allow the baby to come out, and it just never quite goes back right. And then the pelvis will be loose and you'll have chronic pain with bending, with twisting, with getting up and down, uh, or lifting heavy things like the baby or trying to do sports again. What then occurs is the patient tends to get a little looser with time, much like a rubber band that gets stretched over and over. It gets more and more lax and the symptoms come on more and more frequently with less and less stress. So what do we do about it? The first and foremost is to determine where's the pain coming from? Is it actually the SI joint? Unfortunately, MRIs and x-rays often don't tell the whole story, and we have to go through a few injection processes to better determine if it's really the SI. We'll block the joint itself and put anesthetic in it, or we'll block the small nerves that go to the joint and then better determine, is this really the source? Once we figure out that this is it, We'd confirm that with the patient's history, how they got injured, what the examination shows, and what do the diagnostic testing show. Once we confirm it, now you talk about treatment. What do we do about it? That's the part that's exciting. It can actually be fixed despite how long they've had symptoms. We often go in and we will inject the ligaments and the joint capsule with sugar. That's prolotherapy. And we irritate the tissues just a little bit to make them grow, much like if you used laid brick without gloves, you'd get sore hands, but if you kept doing it, you'd get callus. So if you go in and re-inject the ligaments a few times with sugar and irritate it, you can actually make them want to protect themselves and they'll grow faster to make it stronger. You can do the same thing in an even better way with platelets where we take the platelets out of your own blood, the cells that clot your blood, and we actually super concentrate those because they're full of growth factors and stimulants that promote the immune system to work better. And we inject the areas of the, injur the injured areas of the SI joint inside the capsule and the ligaments. And we do that also a few times and it imitates trauma. It makes the body think it got injured even though it didn't. And it releases growth factors and stimulates those tissues to get healthier and happier and ultimately make the joint stronger.